we continue with uh, narayana pandita so in this uh, second lecture on uh, ganita kaumudi i will be talking about uh, the meeting of travelers then progressions so and a very important uh, topic the vara sankalita sum of sums the kate sum so then uh, a co problem which is a application of this so then some progress in cyclic quadrilaterals uh, narayana pandita has made so that is the diagonals of a cyclic quadrilateral he introduced the concept of a third diagonal <coughs> and so on so then construction of rational triangle with rational sides perpendiculars and segments and then lastly some generalization of binomial coefficients and generalized fibonacci numbers <coughs> suppose two travelers are uh, there it's they start from two pl uh, places the distance between which is d so then the two persons they suppose they started from these places simultaneously in opposite directions with v1 and v2 so the following rule gives the rules for their times of meeting so they will meet several times <coughs> so distance divided by the sum of the speeds happen to be the time for the first meeting twice the quotient obtained by the division of distance by the same is the time of meeting again after that meeting tasmin yoga dvigune yoga tasmat punar yoga and they are meeting again second meeting so it is illustrated in this figure so one person is starting from here other person is starting from here so first they meet at he is traveling with uh, speed v1 this person with speed v2 so they meet uh, let's say here first so then <coughs> clearly so this is x so then this fellow is traveling distance x with uh, speed v1 so x by v1 so that must be equal to so this will be d minus x d minus x by v2 so solving for x we get uh, d v1 by v1 plus v2 the time of meeting is x by v1 is d divided by v1 plus v2 so that is the uh, this thing and the second meeting is at b where you know again so this fellow will proceed toward that and comes back similarly he will also proceed and come back so we can work out all these things so the second meeting will be uh, it will be 3d v1 by uh, 3d divided by v1 plus v2 that is from the beginning so that will be the time of meeting so time between the first and second meetings will be 2d by v1 plus v2 so that is a simple result so he has given some example for this the distance between two towns is 300 dojanas yojana trishato yantaha prayoho antaram kayoho so ekadasha gatistva eko navayojana gah paraha so one is uh, having a speed of 10 11 yojanas per some time per day other nine yojana navayojana so tell quickly the times of their uh, meetings so you can work it out so time of first meeting is 15 then second is 45 after the i mean from the beginning so time between meetings is 30 okay then traveling along a circle <coughs> see suppose two people are traveling in a circle like this so then what is the when do they meet okay suppose they start with different speeds v1 and v2 so then see let v1 be greater than v2 then suppose let them meet at x at a distance from p so that means if they are meeting that means the person who was traveling fast he would have completed one circle and then extra you see and the second person will be meeting here so the distance traveled by one who is moving with higher speed is c plus x is this is x and the distance traveled by 2 is x so you got c plus x by v1 is x by v2 so solving for x we get x is equal to c v2 by v1 minus v2 and time of meeting is c by v1 minus v2 so this is you know applied this is applied in um, astronomy this is called you know for to calculate what is known as a synodic period 
see suppose a planet you are seeing that it is moving around the earth as you observe it. So, then they move with different speeds when are they at in conjunction ok. So, that is what is uh, this thing you know. See for instance sun and moon when they are they are apparently they are moving with respect to the earth right in a circle two different circles. But of course, does not matter with even though they are different circles the angular speed will be what is what counts ok. So, when they are in conjunction so then that will be this amavasya or new moon day then, then again how much is that. So, that you can calculate by circumference divided by the difference in velocities ok. So, next an important uh, result is uh, doing suppose you have got this you know this first sum of the in, uh, integer second sum or uh, some sum of square sum of cube. So, they are uh, old, old results by that time uh, you know, Narayana Pandita wrote his work it had been uh, they had been discussed threadbare in the earlier works and second sum is also the second sum is also uh, stated in Aribati onwards. So, now he considered an arithmetic progression with these terms that is each term is a sum of an arithmetic series ok. So, the rth term will be this 1 plus 2 etcetera a plus r minus 1 into d. So, sum of this arithmetic progression you see you have to sum over this r is equal to 1 to n. So, then you will get like this. So, and he gives the so slightly more general kind of a thing you see. So, from the uh, sum of and sum of sums of integers you are going to the arithmetic progression kind of a thing. So, this will be the so the stated is uh, ok I have not given this Sanskrit first does not matter. So, now a very very important uh, advancement in uh, Ganita Kaumudi I would like to talk about it. See earlier we had the sigma of r you see sorry this must be n into n plus 1 by 2. So, that is when you sum from 1 to n the sum of first n integers is n into n plus 1 by 2 then sum of sums. So, that is n into uh, that is sum of this you know. So, if you sum this once so then it will be n into n plus 1 by 2 now sum this from r is equal to 1 to n. So, we write it like this 1 to n. So, that is n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 by 1 into 2 into 3. So, this is given by you know earlier uh, um, mathematicians. The last is the sum of the sums are the second sum. So, Narayana Pandita generalizes this to the kth sum. Suppose, you do it k times. So, then that is equal to n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 etcetera up to n plus k divided by 1 into 2 into 3 divided by k plus 1. So, this is equal to n plus k c k plus 1. So, this is a very important result it has not been stated in earlier in uh, Indian mathematics literature. <coughs> this result is stated in uh, Yukti Basha also without referring to Narayana Pandita. So, probably uh, they would have discovered it themselves also because I mean that is at a fairly advanced level that they are doing. So, they might have done it because other things which they have you know borrowed from they have always you know quoted you know uh, Lagumanasa or Leeravati they always quoted. So, this is not quoted so probably they did it anyway and this plays a very crucial role in the infinite Taylor series for sin and cosine functions and uh, this is how Narayana Pandita states it Ekadika Varamitaha Padadi Rupotaraha Prutak Temshaha Ekod Jekachaya Hara that dhato vara sankalitam vara sankalita is called. So, number of terms say n is the first term of in of an uh, arithmetic progression and one the common difference those that is terms of the AP their numbers being one more than the number of times the sum is to be taken or the numerator. Then one needs to be the first term of another AP and one the common difference these are the denominators and uh, their product is the kth sum of n. So, very <coughs> So, he is clearly giving this result yeah n into n plus 1 into n plus k up to because he is saying those one more than the number of terms. So, this will go num first term is a 1 
then it goes up to one more number. This is sum of n should be taken. That is, so the uh, n plus k should come in the last term. Okay. So now suppose I will use this notation for this v and k, k sum of n. So we will. He is giving this. So we should show, but in how is it written as a sum of sums? You see. So it should be. If it is a sum like that, then it should be a sum of this k minus one kind of a thing, right? So, so first sum, then when you sum this, you should get the second sum, then you get the third sum, etc. etc. So, he is giving the result for the k sum. So, we should show that it is actually uh, k minus one sum when it is summed over things. You should get this. Okay. So, we have to show that uh, we will show that this actually satisfies this thing. That you know that is. You k minus one sum when you sum from one to n, you get this result. So now v n k is n plus k c k plus one. So using the properties of this n c r, you get is n plus k minus one c k plus one plus n plus k minus one c k. So v n k is equal to v n k minus one plus v n minus one k. So using this repeatedly, see this again. We write as v n minus one k minus one plus v n minus two k etc. Finally, you get it is v n k up to v n k minus one etc. But here that also v one k, so that is the sum with one term. You see, so k or k minus one, it doesn't matter. So v one k is equal to v one k minus one. That is always equal to one. So v n k is this. So this is the sum, and the result is already given. So proceeding in this manner, and this again can be expressed as the sum of the lower order sum. So v n k is k sum is written as v r zero. So now v r zero is r c one is equal to r, right? So that is zero is sum of r, which is r itself. So v n k is indeed the k sum of first n integers. So now this is illustrated with a very famous cow problem in. Ganit ka umudi, so very interesting problems. Abdas taranya abdon dona ha una ha prutak prutak yavad alpatam yanti tani kramasesh chayka dika eka dika varana padani siyhu. He gives the solution itself first. Um, subtract. I mean, it is as if one is supposed to know the problem. Okay. Subtract the number of years in which a calf begins giving birth. From the number of years successively and separately, till the remainder becomes smaller than the subtractive, these are the number for repeated summation. Tani kramas chayika ekadika varana. Okay, one stage etc. In that order, ekadika varana. This is first sum, second sum etc. Okay, sum of the summations along with one added to the number of years is the number of progeny. Okay, so we are to. So this is the solution he is giving. So let's understand what is. Uh, um, I will just uh, explain this slide before giving the table. See, one cow is there. So initial cow, okay, or some primordial cow, let us say, okay. So it is there. So then, <coughs> every year it is giving birth to one calf, okay. You will assume that it is a female calf only. Every year it is giving one calf. So for twenty years, okay, we are discussing that. Okay, now the calf born in the first year would produce its first offspring in the fourth year. See, after three years only it is done. Okay, so so this calf is giving. See the first generation of cows. You see, first generation of the cows. So then this is the second generation. You see, this is giving rise to this year, and here you see. In the next year, fifth year, this will of course give one, and here this also will give one uh, rise to one calf, and similarly, so this is one plus one plus one, etc. The next row it is one plus two, so then in the sixth year this also will start. Okay, so all the you know calves will you know who are born in successive years, they will start producing their own calves in the successive years. So they will be that is the second third column will be this second column will be that. So then again, these you know, so this is the fourth year. 
from the seventh year onward there will be the third generation of cows so that is what is happening <coughs> the calf born in the first year would produce its first offspring in the fourth year this and the one born in second etc so total number of second generation calves will be 1 plus 2 etc 17 okay first generation is 1 plus 1 second generation is 1 plus 2 plus etc up to 17 only no 17 we will see that yeah similarly the total number of third fourth fifth sixth etc will be v14 2 v113 you see third sum of 11 second sum of 14 third sum of 11 uh, fourth sum of 8 fifth sum of 5 and sixth sum of 2 so no more generations within 20 years as the eighth generation would be only in the 22nd year so let me the table it will be clear you see the first generation is 111 etc first year you see it will go on in the next slide also it goes on then the second generation you see v10 is equal to 1 v20 is equal to 2 because the one born in the second year also is giving so 3 etc so second generation if you sum you will get 1 plus 2 etc up to 17 because it goes from 4 to 20 so it is 17 1 plus after up to 17 the third generation will be so this one you see v10 that will give one then next in the eighth year 1 plus 2 you see that will become okay so next will be like that you know <coughs> so the second sum will come and uh, so and the fourth generation it will be so like that v12 etc so fifth generation so v20 zero that is only just 20 then v17 one so that is 17 into 17 plus 1 by 2 and this will be 14 this is 14 into 14 plus 1 into 14 plus 2 divided by 1 into 2 into 3 so like that so this is the seventh generation of the offsprings so total will be total progeny produced by the gomata is you know 20 17 1 17 14 2 <laughs> etc so 20 plus 17 into 18 by 1 into 2 plus 14 into 15 into 16 by 1 into 2 into 3 etc etc okay so finally it will be 2744 so if we had to add one if we want to include the original initial cow also So that will be the total number. So this is the direct application of the. So then, of course, we'll talk uh, about the kth sum of a series in arithmetic progression. So uh, consider an arithmetic progression y a y plus d etc. So y plus n minus one d. First term is y. Common difference is d. Number of terms is n. then the he has given this result ruponita padavaraja sankalitam syachaye gunaha saprutak ekadika charagno veka parapto mukhe guno bhavati sagunagna dyutrai yogah syat varajam ganitam the kth sum of n number of terms less 1 etc i mean i might as well give the result in the this thing so what he is doing is there is an arithmetical progression so kth sum of that so that is given by the result so how do we understand it the first sum is this you see when you sum an arithmetic progression the first sum will be this an plus n into n minus 1 by 2 into d right that is in a sum of an arithmetic progression first term a common difference is d and uh, number of terms n so now you have to sum over this so make it into r and then r is going from 1 to n you see that is a so kth sum will be k minus 1 sum of this k minus 1 sum of an plus n into n minus 1 by 2 into d so k minus 1 sum of n plus d into you see this is uh, this is uh, uh, um, this is actually First sum of n minus one, so k minus one is there. So kth sum of n minus one, as the first sum, n minus one is n into n minus one by two. So finally, you get this result because 
k minus 1 sum of n is this right n into n plus 1 you should go up to n plus k minus 1 and so k terms are there and below again k terms 1 into 2 etc k plus d into k sum of n minus 1 so which is n minus 1 you should start and n minus 1 plus k so like this so this is the final result so for instance he gives an example adihi samiranam itha prachayas tri sankhyo gacchesu saptasu vadasu prardha buddhe varahi payonidhi mitahi parivartanena chat kim phalam phalam ganitam matsaratasti chechet first term first term of an arithmetic progression is 5 common difference is 3 3 sankhya right and the number of terms is 7 number of is gacha you know gacchesu saptasu Oh, best among learners. Okay, he is wooing the <laughs> his audience. Tell quickly the fourth sum of this thing. You see, payon idhi varehi. If you have passion for mathematics, tell the sum by in changing the ingredients also. So a is five, d is three. Common difference n is seven, k is four. So if you plug in these numbers here you get the result this is 1806 one can work out changing the ingredients what he is saying is make it 6 and other kind of a thing so <clears throat> then the geometric progression uh, nothing new as far as I could see Up, you know from what is given in Ganita Sara Sangraha and Leelavati then uh, some of Ruttas and all those uh, these things that is also same as in Lilavati. So, in geometry <coughs> in Ganita Kaumudi in chapter 4. So, all the results of geometry in Ganita Sara Sangra and Lilavati are stated here and adds many results of his own, especially, especially rational triangles and quadrilaterals and also generalizes many results. So, you might have noticed this, you know, he always tries to generalize the results given in earlier works. So, we give some interesting results in geometry of plane figures. See, for instance, gross area of a regular polygon with n sides. So, he gives the n sides. So, suppose the side is s. So, in the gross area, he says is n squared minus n into s squared by 12, where s is the side, and uh, I know it does not come out all right. And even in approximation of large n, I find that it will be n squared minus 3 by 12 into s squared. Apart from of course, we are already made a uh, approximation of pi being equal to 3. Okay. So, it is not clear what the approximation is. Anyway, it is a very small result here. So, after many other gross results, Narayana states that you know the earlier gross results have been stated for novice calculations due to occasional disagreement between gross and exact results. I have not much respect for them. He himself has stated. Okay. So, it is only maybe to you know test the alertness of the students, <laughs> whatever it is, anyway. But many of them in you know, approximations do make sense. Then diagonal of a cyclic quadrilateral. So <clears throat> I will not go into, into detail of this earlier result, okay. So area of a you know that area of the cyclic quadrilateral is this, then the diagonal of the uh, this thing is two diagonals you know how to get it you see that is the result famous result due to Brahmagupta divide the sum of the products of the sides about both the diagonals for each other multiply the quotients with the sum of the products of opposite sides square roots of the products of the diagonals in a quadrilateral now comes the new thing so new thing he is saying he introduces the concept of a third diagonal so which will be very useful in many results on cyclic quadrilaterals in all cyclic quadrilaterals, the new diagonal, new of course, in, uh, it does not say the diagonal obtained by the interchange of its face and flank side is a third diagonal. So, this is this is so this is your um, cyclic quadrilateral A, B, C, D. So, these are the diagonals, right? B, D, and uh, A, C, they are the diagonals. So, call them E and F. So, the expressions for that is you know fairly straightforward, we have already done that. 
of course the result may look slightly different because my order of the sites may be you know you please check you know so here you know it is a b c d so a b and c d are the opposite pairs so when you are uh, comparing with other results please mark this anyway so now he is saying you know see in now you get another quadrilateral you know by making dc prime is equal to bc so they are essentially interchanging the side so dc prime is equal to bc and bc prime is equal to cd so essentially these two sides are and this diagonal are kept same the, the upper flanks you know you can say they are interchanged so that is this thing and then <coughs> so ab c prime d that is the uh, new uh, cyclic quadrilateral and this is ac prime is the third diagonal so that is the thing and uh, a third diagonal and very easily you can find out the third diagonal because essentially what have you done in getting this new diagonal essentially these sides b and c have interchanged right see see this upper this thing so instead of c this is become b and this in this is instead of b it is become c so that's the thing only i interchange b and c so diagonal expression also is straight forward only you have to express this thing you know so instead of interchange b and c so ab plus cd so this will be ad plus bc that will be then then ac plus bd so that is it. so this is the third diagonal so it plays a very important role in um, the Uh, proof for the area of a cyclic quadrilateral and also for the area of the circum diameter so that in yukti bhasha it is proved and um, the other speakers one of them probably professor ram subramaniam will prove that result which is given in yukti bhasha so for that this concept is very crucial the third diagonal plays an important role so Yeah, that's what he has given. No, the change, interchange of sides. No, but what is? So you interchange the sides. Upper sides, yeah. You interchange one pair of sides. Yeah, yeah. And you got a new diagonal. Yeah, yeah. And therefore what? No, the, you know, that is comes in various things. I will, we'll, we'll see. That will, you know, the new diagonal has come. But what is the use of that? Yes, several results. As I said, using this, it is very important for you uh, proving the uh, this uh, expression for this. Uh, Area of a cyclic quadrilateral. You have to use this concept of third diagonal. <coughs> yeah, that is the thing. Yeah. yeah. So you're referring it to the third diagonal as if the quadrilateral has remained unchanged. No, no, but that's how they are using. You see, ah, okay. so it's as important as the first two diagonals of the original quadrilateral. Perhaps that is what they mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a third diagonal of the same quadrilateral. By interchanging sides again, you will not get any more. Any more this thing? Yeah. So the plane is three. So you interchange any other side, you will get back the same thing. That's why there are three diagonals. Yeah, because if you if you interchange this, the order will be different, but you will get the same thing. You know, so maximum you can generate three, yeah. probably. Yes, yes, that is the thing. So then you will get the circum diameter. I have already given this result earlier. You see, see suppose we were. Uh, The sides A and B. See, suppose this is a triangle, A B C. So then this B Q is perpendicular to A C. It may not appear in the figure like that, but it is. Take it like that. So suppose this is that perpendicular R. So then he states that D is equal to A B by R. This is the Brahmagupta result, which I don't have to uh, say again. And uh, it is perpendicular. And you can also write it as D into F by P. See, suppose you take instead of that you know this this triangle you see so any circle triangle you see the circum uh, uh, diameter will be the product of the sides and uh, divided by the perpendicular you see so that is the thing so this is the result here also then the area of a cyclic quadrilateral is stated in the following multiply the sum of the products of the sides lying on the same side and divide the product by four times the circum radius that is the area of the equilateral and other quadrilaterals he says 
So, this is the expression for the area. <coughs> so, they would have is very clear because you know you can consider it as two triangles you know so a b uh, these two triangles and you know those perpendiculars are there so from that you can get the uh, result okay okay because the half base into altitude and altitude itself is given in terms of the two sides and circumdiameter that is the thing you see that is what you are doing so you get the point so the abcd is a cyclic quadrilateral the area of this cyclic quadrilateral can be thought to be the sum of the areas of the triangle abd and bcd so area of triangle abd plus area of triangle bcd call this as a1 and call this as a2 now this area of this triangle abd is half base into height you can consider bd as the base half bd into height so which is essentially you drop a perpendicular from a to this base bd call it as p1 so bd is f so half f into p1 now the circum radius of the triangle circum radius if you call it as r triangle abd r so this is the product of the two sides ab into bd divided by phi is the perpendicular so this is essentially ad divided by 2 into now the perpendicular is p1 so you get p1 is equal to ad divided by 2r so substituting that here substituting that here one can see that this is equal to 1 by 4 into ad into f divided by 4r so this is the area of the triangle abd so the similarly the area of the triangle bcd so which is a2 so same logic will apply instead of ad you will get bc here so bc into the base is the same f divided by r so the area of the quadrilateral cyclic quadrilateral is equal to a1 plus a2 is equal to 1 by 4 into ad plus bc into f divided by r so this is what has been stated So then alternate expression yeah see for instance he gives the result that the radius circum radius is equal to efg by 4a so this is where you know so neatly it comes that the radius is equal to the product of all the three diagonals divided by 4 times the area so alternately so chaturahata pala vihrute trikarana gate thava hrudayam them is the circum radius alternately the product the three diagonals divided by four times the area so that is the circum radius so this will you know introduce some symmetry in their thing you know so all these things are somewhat equivalent and radius comes out neatly as the product of all the three diagonals divided by the four times the area then construction of integral cyclic quadrilaterals i will not have too much time <coughs> i will not go into that in detail 
See, for instance, he will start from two triangles, right triangles like this, r squared minus s squared, 2 r s, r squared plus s squared, p squared minus 2 squared, 2 p q, p squared plus 2 squared. See, if r s, uh, p q, etc. are uh, uh, yeah, rational number, these also will be rational, okay. So, then actually you can get, if you are integers, they will be integers. So, you can get an integral quadrilateral using these, starting from this, where the sides and perpendiculars, etc are given in this figure. So, what is important is not only the sides, but the various perpendiculars, the various segments, etc. They are all integral here, you see. So, it is highly quite a non-trivial result. So, it will take some time to explain, but he has constructed. That is why there is some extra factor, you know, r squared plus s squared everywhere. Otherwise, that need not have been there. So, that this is to make um, all the other things also like perpendiculars and segments also integral. So, he gives this result. So, then he gives a very interesting result construction of rational triangles whose sides differ by unity. So, he says that, so this is you know what we have want is a triangle with sides x minus 1, x plus 1 and uh, uh, yeah, x, x, x minus 1, x plus 1, okay. So, where all the sides are integral, you can say what is so great, you know, because you can choose any x and you can keep, you know, a triangle is determined by three sides. But what he wants is all the perpendicular segments, they should all be integral, okay. So, that is what he is doing, he is given, uh, giving this thing. So, the uh, construction is so, as follows, device twice an optional number by the square of the optional number less 3, add 1 to thrice the square of the quotient, twice the square root of the sum is the base, 1 added to and subtracted from the base are the flank sides. So, what he is saying is that, you know, jigunesta mishta krutya trihina yaptamcha tat krutis triguna saika mulam jigunam buhu saiko na dikha bahuhu. So, essentially, finally, he is giving, if you are having this kind of a uh, situation, so then using the um, theorem of the right triangle, one can easily see that the solution for this is if n is this, I mean x is this in terms of n, then this will be a rational triangle with all the perpendiculars and segments also being this thing. Okay. Now, very important thing is now he will generate an infinite number of triangles with uh, uh, this kind of a procedure. So, that is uh, what is stated here. I will give the, I will tell you what he wants to do. See, so it essentially, see you are, you are you are having this kind of a thing. You see, this is a triangle, right? This is a triangle, and considering the fact that these are these are right angle triangle, one can easily get this result 3 by 4 x squared minus 3 is equal to y squared. See x and y should satisfy this relation you see, but y is a perpendicular. Okay. So, now yeah. Now, you know he will say that you know where x is the base y is the perpendicular. So, let the solutions for the base be written as x 1, x 2, etcetera and the corresponding perpendiculars y 1, y 2, etcetera. Suppose, we have found x j and y j up to j is equal to i minus 1. So, then it is stated that new solution x i y i can be found using x i x uh, x i is equal to 2 into x i minus 1 plus y i minus 1 and y i is equal to 3 into x i minus 1 plus y i minus 2. Okay. So, this is what is given in the verse. 3 being the length of the perpendicular and 4 the base of the first right angle triangle and its infinite pairs of right angle triangles are produced in which sides increase by unity. In these the perpendicular from the vertex to the respective base is sum of the thrice the previous base added to the still previous perpendicular and the base is twice the sum of the previous perpendicular added to the previous base. So, this is what he is stating. So, this is in the spirit of yesterday and today is the bhavana. This is a bhavana or a composition law, samasa bhavana in this case, right. So, you are getting from Brahma Gupta, right. 
xi yi if you have a, a pair of integers which is satisfying the uh, varga prakruti equation x squared minus d y squared is equal to k of course there you talk of two of them x1 squared minus d y1 squared is equal to k1 then x2 squared minus d y2 squared is equal to k2 so then you can generate another pair which will satisfy this with k1 k2 as the shape so that was discussed in detail how to get that how that x is in terms of x1 x2 and uh, things like that by one by two so this is another bhavana kind of a thing so from this xi plus 1 yi plus 1 can be found and so on the simplest equation of course is you know this uh, the zero so that is not a solution then take next is x1 is equal to 4 y1 is equal to 3 so then here 3 by 4 x squared minus 3 is equal to y squared so that is uh, satisfied in this case one segment of the base is zero and the other segment is the base itself so that is 4 the upper rate is 3 and the hypotenuse is 5 so we can prove this i not going to the proof it is a simple proof okay so <coughs> um so induction i mean so that is one if you are generated up to i the next still is <laughs> that is what is given here you are generating the next uh, set of values so i will uh, these quite some you know just some uh, manipulations with uh, right triangles and so on so this is the sequence so this is correct one can show that uh, this is you know this will satisfy all the criteria so <coughs> the for instance if you take x0 is equal to 2 y0 is equal to 0 you start from that so this will satisfy those equations x1 you talk take this and uh, y1 4 3 okay then you start from 4 3 other sides are x minus 1 is equal to 3 x plus 1 is equal to 5 and the segments are 0 and 4 as i told this will collapse but the next will be 14 12 x2 will be 14 y2 will be 12 So x is equal to x two is equal to fourteen and twelve. These are perpendicular. The other sides are thirteen and fifteen. Thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen are the sides, and the segments are five and nine. So this is the uh, essentially the first kind of a. So the one of the segments is zero here. So three, four, five. It's not collapse. Sorry, it is just you know one segment is zero. That's all. It is a valid triangle. It is a right angle triangle. That's all. Okay. So next is you know. Um, This triangle thirteen, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen that you will get, and from that you will get fifty-one, fifty-three, fifty-two, with these as the perpendiculars and all that. So these are integral solutions for sides with differing by unity as well as perpendiculars and segments. So clearly there are an infinite number of solutions. So these are the kind of nice uh, tricks that he does. So then. of course i will not be dealing too much with combinatorics but a little bit i will tell it that is there in the 13th chapter called anka pasha <coughs> it is a very elaborate one containing many rules new results on permutations and combinations so he considers a generalized fibonacci sequence he described here so we already heard about it fibonacci sequence is 1 2 3 5 8 12 etc and if pn denotes the nth term in the sequence it satisfies this relation the same thing as what uh, professor sinwas talked about he was using the symbol s instead of p so s and this thing and uh, he was also explaining how we tucker you know naturally in this you know suppose you assign the value 1 to a laghu and 2 to a guru okay then with a given number of matra that is the num- total number you know then how many uh, common how many pa- pa- possibilities are there you see see suppose there is only zero of it is suppose one one only okay one is one ha it is 13 ab of course sorry it is 13 okay so suppose you have only one the total is one then can it can only be one then suppose it is two then is one plus one or the other these are the partitions or it can be written as two that is two lagu or one guru right And three is one plus one plus one, so three lagus, and also are one lagu and one guru, written in two these things. Say so, totally there will be three ways. So like that. So, 
and this is what will lead to you know this elation also this nice elation and uh, you will get the things so he generalizes this and it can be shown that this pn will be equal to n c 0 plus n minus 1 c 1 plus etc up to n minus m c m where this m is n by 2 if n is even and m is equal to n minus 1 by 2 if n is odd I think this also was I think done in that lecture so one can check that this will satisfy the recursion relation like this okay so remember the uh, origin of this kind of how this code this is this are understood okay see so, suppose you have got this total is n n minus 1 and n minus 2 okay so then what was explained earlier was that you know suppose you have got this uh, <coughs> n minus 1 matra kind of a thing so then you add a lagu to each of them okay so that will become n you see total will be n and similarly if you have n minus 2 okay n minus 2 you add a guru to each of them okay at the end so this if this is this number is yes n minus 1 so this number is yes n minus 2 the total will be sn the total number of uh, the arrangements such that the total becomes uh, n right so that is uh, uh, to totally the same so that is the uh, logic here totally is n actually yeah the number is sn etc et so now he goes to the the Fibonacci numbers in fact actually appeared 600 years earlier in the work Ruttajati Samuchiya Virahanka who arrived at the recurrence relation P1, Pn is equal to Pn minus 1 plus Pn minus 2 in the context of a discussion of Matravurtas or Morik meters. This was discussed in an earlier lecture by Professor M. D. Srinivas. Narayana Samasiki sequence is essentially a generalization of the sequence discovered by Virahanka in the context of prosody. It is essentially a generalized Fibonacci sequence where one considers the partition of a number when all the digits from 1 to q take part in the partitions. So, this is denoted by p and q n subscript and q superscript. So, then in that case one can show that we have, we have got these relations p 0 q is equal to p 1 q is equal to 1 and then p n q is equal to this and similarly p n q is equal to this up to you know you are summing you know this is n minus 1 to q terms are there q terms are there in the sum. So, when q is equal to 2 we have the Fibonacci numbers 1 I mean the 0 term also I am putting 1 1 2 3 5 8 of course next is 13 not 12 and q is equal to 3 is if you take q is equal to 3 the sama sequence sama sequence will be 1 1 2 4 7 13 24 44 etcetera. So, here p n 3 is sum of the previous 3 okay. So, 4 is 2 plus 1 plus 1 7 is 4 plus 2 plus 1 13 is 7 plus 4 plus 2 like that you see. So, this also could be understood in a similar manner. So, instead of these 2 you know lagu and guru suppose you have lagu guru and pluta okay so then <coughs> you see so how about how, how is the what is the number of combinations with uh, total mantra to be n you see here what you do is suppose you can start with n minus 3 okay um, uh, which is the total uh, this thing is n minus 3 so now to it add this pluta which carries a uh, value 3 okay so, then you will get total to be n. Similarly, n minus 2 you take and add a guru which will carry the number 2 right. So, this will be n minus 2 plus this thing that will be become this. So, and similarly n minus 1 you add the lagu here. So, this also will give rise to the total number n. So, if you have to sum of all these arrangements that will be this uh, S n 3 I, I mean P n 3 or S n 3 okay. So, P n 3 is you know P n 3 n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus uh, n minus 3. So, this 
so that is how we can understand it and you can generalize it to q so as you can see he is always in the business of generalization <coughs> okay then he generalizes the binomial coefficients also the binomial coefficients are defined through this 1 plus x you know that it they, you get from this n c r into x to the power of r right sum is equal to r is equal to 0 to n so this is the binomial coefficients so now, now he is generalizing it to polynomial coefficients in ganita komudi so what it does is take 1 plus x plus x square plus etc plus x to the power of q minus 1 whole to the power of p so here only the first power of x is coming now you are going up to q minus 1th power okay so then <coughs> you can write it as u p q because this see here only n is there one index so here p q is there they also fixed these things r of course varies so u p q r x to the power of r where the summation is from r is equal to 1 to because the highest power is here is p into q minus 1 and he gives the methods to generate u p q of course he does not write it in this fashion you see so he will talk about you know a number 1 1 1 1 1 etc multiplied by several times and so on you see but it will amount to that see at the amount to that so then if you take q is equal to 2 of course it will reduce to this binomial theorem and you get p c r p 2 r otherwise and then he will given the relations between this uh, generalized fibonacci numbers and these u's so that is very interesting so it's fairly uh, quite advanced you know it's just 14th century remember you see all these things became you know very common uh, uh, currency much later in other countries so it's quite comfort seems to be comfortable with these fairly advanced topics so uh, given a glimpse of uh, uh, Ganita Kaumudi, some of the important results. Some more uh, things will be discussed by Professor Srinivas. So, okay, I will stop here. Yeah, the same thing as you know, whatever is given in that Ganita Sara Sangraha, I told no, same thing is repeated. Okay. Yeah, see, many of the topics they retain those things, you know. So, they, because they do not want to leave anything, all those things bless something. So, it comes in Ganita Sara Sangraha, it comes in Leelavati, it comes in this thing also. Yes. Nothing more is added as far as I know, I do not think he has added anything to that. Yeah. 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 Uh, when we are talking about the third diagonal, yeah. <coughs> when the sides uh, B and C are interchanged, we get AC prime. Uh, suppose we interchange the sides A and D. And we get another diagonal just out of curiosity. Ah, that also it should be done, but relatively, I think finally you will be essentially only three will be there. See, that will be you know rotating the whole figure. I think that's what I think. It will be ro I essentially rotating the whole figure. The order is what is important. No, see here, you what you are saying. So whatever you see, see A. B, C, D. Okay. So next uh, we are getting A, B, C here and D. They are interchanged, right? So now you are saying suppose we interchange yes. B and A. Okay. B and A. Let's say suppose we do. So then this will be A, C, D, B. So this will be A, C, D, B. Essentially, it will be this triangle rotated you are getting the same thing you see a b see this is the original thing now you are saying interchange this so b a so essentially what i am saying is it is this only rotated you know so b a c d so b a c d okay in the other way i mean the relations between various things will remain the same so you will not get anything new. Essentially, you will get two figures, you know. So that is what is. Yeah. Sir, uh, there was a uh, line uh, sigma r sigma r square sigma r cube, and there was a double sigma. Double sigma. Now, so the double sigma r is the second summation. Second summation. Second summation. 
So, first sigma r is 1 plus etcetera up to n and second is for you do the first sum. So, n into n plus 1 by 2 replace n by r then r into r plus 1 by 2 that you sum from 1 to n. So, that is what it stands for second sum means that yeah yeah it is just written like that. The references are given here. Thank you.